so let's start with the new image grid in this image grid we are going to have three images in one row and we can have as many rows as we want in this example web page i have created two rows with three images each so this is just an example as you can see that when the width of the screen is above 992 pixels we have three images in one row when the width of the screen falls below 992 we have only two images in one row so then it becomes three rows two images each and as we go on decreasing the screen size below 680 pixel width of the screen we get only one image in one row so that becomes six rows of one image each so having that idea in mind let's start with the coding you can download these starter files folder this is the first image which illustrates that below 680 pixel this is how the web page is going to look then second one illustrates that the width of the screen is between 680 and 992 pixels and the third one is above 992 pixels wide in the img folder we have all the images that i have used so let's just create a simple text document and rename it to index.html be sure to remove this .txt extension so that it becomes html document then you can open this document in any text editor that you have and if you want to see the color scheme that i am using if you happen to use this sublime text all right then let's start with the html tag as soon as you start writing html the autocomplete will show the complete tag you can hit enter then quickly fill in the title and I am going to use some special Google fonts so for that I am going to write some link and we are going to have one external css file where we are going to use css to style our web page so this link points to that external css file and since this external css file is going to be in the same folder with this index.html so we don't have to write the location we just have to write the name of the file along with the extension then let's start with the image grid get inside the body tag and create a section tag class sd hyphen flex hyphen c that is for column we are going to define this class in a way the elements which are defined under this class will get stacked in different rows so that in the first row we can just write the title and in the second row we can have all the images then write the title create a div class text hyphen center to center align the text then text container to add some padding around it then you can write the text whatever text you want And if you want to write some text below the heading, you can do that as well. My-1 is going to add one rem of margin on the top and bottom of this p tag. Now let's open the file in the browser. 
so for now we just have the title and the text below it so then get outside this div and let's start with the image grid let's begin with the first row create a unordered list tag that is the ul tag class d hyphen flex hyphen r we are going to change the flex property of this class in a way that we can have many elements in one row we will define this class later in the css but the basic idea is that we are going to need many images in one single row depending upon the width of the screen so that part will be done by the css then get inside and create a li tag and write the class one underscore third and we are going to define this class in a way that this li tag gets one third of the width of the screen or the one third of the width of the row so that in one row we get three images then inside define the image that you want to use and since the image is in the img folder so we need to define the correct location that is img forward slash product hyphen one dot jpg and you can see this is the index.html file then this is the img folder and this is the image that we have accessed we can see the images in the browser and copy this entire ally tag paste it five more times and then just change the name of the images so that we can have the six images all right so with this the html part is over now we need to move to the css so quickly get back to the startup files folder where we have defined the html file as well and just create a new text document and rename it to style.css make sure to remove the .txt extension then open it in the text editor make sure that the name that you have defined in the link is the same name that you have used in the css file so that these two files are linked together let's just define our default font size then margin as well as the padding for the entire web page all right now let's start with the ul tag Similarly in the body tag we can change the font family just to make it look better. Then P tag, some text formatting for the P tag as well.
then let's start with s2 tag that is the heading tag we need to space out the letters and increase the font size as well and make it bold So now let's start with the flex properties. So we will begin with D-flex-C class that display as flex so that the tag becomes a flex. Then flex direction to column so that the elements inside this class are stacked one in a row column wise flex wrap property to wrap because we want the elements to wrap to different rows now let's define the d hyphen flex hyphen r class and also make sure to use a dot symbol before writing the name of the classes because these are the classes and according to the syntax of the CSS if we want to refer to a class we need to use dot symbol if we want to refer or reference to a ID we need to use a hash symbol and if we want to refer to a HTML tag we just write the tag we don't use any symbol before it then display as flex and the flex direction to row and let's wrap this one also now let's format the images and since img is a html tag we don't need to write any symbol before it width 100% height 100% .1_3rd class we need to define this class in a way that this class takes one third of the width of the row or the one third of the width of the screen that is around 33.33333 as many threes as you can write percent now let's see in the browser all right now if you want to see what this wrap property is doing just remove it from here and refresh it in the browser and you can see that the html is trying to accommodate all the images in just one row it is not wrapping to the next row so this is what the flex wrap property is doing if we use the wrap property then the three images will be wrapped to the next row because adding up the width of the first three images will be around 100% so there will not be left any width for the rest of the images so they will be wrapped to the next row then let's define text center class to center align the text and let's add some padding to the text container similarly let's add some margin
now let's use the media query for the responsiveness so that the number of images in each row depends upon the width of the screen so write at media space screen space and space open bracket max width 992 pixels then get inside dot one underscore third and let's make the width to 50 percent so this part of the media query will make sure that when the width of the screen falls below 992 pixels then the width of the one underscore third class will be 50 percent so making the width of the one third class to 50 percent will make sure that there will be only two images in one row below 992 pixels because adding 50 and 50 will make 100 so there will be no space for the third one third one will be wrapped onto the next row so we just need to have one more media query so copy this entire part paste it and change the maximum width to 680 pixels and here we need to have the width as 100% so that only one image is displayed in one row below 680 pixels so with this we have completed this video now if you want to experiment more, try to remove the media query of maximum width 992 pixels and paste it at the bottom and let's see how the page responds or let's see how the browser responds. We have made the maximum width 680 first then 992 so let's see how this will make the browser res respond. So by stating the 680 pixels first. You can see that the first media query is not accessible at all because the second one stating the maximum width to be 992 pixels holds true always so we will always have two images in one row anyways just change the order back so that while defining the media query using max width we follow the decreasing order of the pixels so have the 992 pixels first and then the 680 pixel and that is all so with this we have completed this video if you like the video you know what to do i'm going to see you in the next video till then thanks for watching